Anyway, so Rafi approached me and he said, I really want you to do a show in PF. I want to I help you put it together. And I went, no, because I knew it would be a lot of work. I'm not a stranger to work, but I just didn't think that's where I wanted my energy to go. He persisted and persisted, and finally I said, okay, fine, send me, arc something, send me a treatment, send me something. And he sent me this fabulous, I could see it, feel it, touch it, taste it, and I had to do it. So we did it. And How it, long ago was that? This was maybe three years ago, okay. maybe, f yeah, three, I think, maybe three. So after three Lacage. Oh, yeah, definitely And you were Lacage. definitely living the French I have been Persona living French there, on and off yeah. forever, you know? So, you know, nee, 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 nee. there's something <laughs> in that, you know? My life has always seemed to go that way. Yeah. You when know, you look at it something. now, it seems inevitable. In a way, yeah. 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 And, then, and then a great, who's become a great friend, Pascal Rieu, of Rieu Dance New York. He's Parisian French. And I didn't know him. He called me. He had a whole different take of a whole different show called Street Singer, which I still actively perform. I just did it about a month ago in Bethlehem. And Ryu Dance is currently, I think, performing right now in New York. They're Martha Graham based. He was a Martha Graham soloist. He approached me about his show, which was singing Piaf to these beautiful dancers. And I said, because I'm very honest, I said, Pascal, you, you have to understand, though, I, I don't speak French. Mm -hmm. And there was this long pause. And then this voice with a smile says, I know, I saw you on YouTube. <gasps> <laughs> so, and he still wanted to work with me. And then, of course, I coached a little more because there's such intricacies in the language. It's so beautiful. So I did that show. And then finally, I took the elements of both because then by then, she's haunting me herself. Mm -hmm. Herself. What does haunting. that mean? I don't exactly. What does it look like? That she's haunting me. It looks yeah, like. like, looks like <laughs> it's not a look, it's a sound. Uh -huh. There's, I, I'm so, I just, I just feel provoked. It's not, it's not even like words. It's just a constant, like, it just comes across my sphere, mm -hmm. her energy. And I go, what's that? And that's not, I'm little out there like that. So that's not unusual for me. You know, as an artist, you're always out there looking for the next channel for your expression, you know, and you don't always know where it's going to come from. So when something keeps pushing itself in front of me, she was just pushing. She's a pushy broad. She kept <laughs> pushing herself in front of me. So I went, OK, OK, fine. Mm -hmm. And I just relaxed with it. And suddenly, it just started flowing. And I, I read this lovely book yeah. by Carolyn Burke called Piaf No Regrets. And I learned that Piaf herself had, it was, first, it's just a fascinating story. And she pumped up the truth a lot. She'd embellished the truth a lot. Yeah, she was like and an Instagram star before there was Instagram. She was amazing. She did all of her own PR. And she was a very modern woman. But as if her life wasn't fascinating enough, she was always embellishing it. So I kind of felt she was saying to me, it's time to just set the truth out there. Mm -hmm. So that there's a beautiful quote in here, which I won't do right, that Carolyn Burke, the uh, author, actually says that when you lean on the tragic myth, you do a disservice to the life of the artist, to their artistry. Because, you know, if you think of Garland, you just keep thinking, oh, it's so sad, it's so sad, all the pills. And there's this phenomenal artist there, too. But sometimes the tragedy just usurps the actual artist. So I think Edith was saying, put who I am out there, who I really am, mm -hmm. for a generation that most likely doesn't know me in this country anyway, maybe in Europe but not here, and also where you can have instant celebrity. I mean, you tell me from where you sit, you know, you must see a number of people who may be really wonderful, but there's a certain entitlement or something. I mean, to be a true artist is, is a big deal. It's an ongoing, never-ending search for putting something truthful you know, in front of people. And also, I think, also putting before people the era that we're living in through what you do. And she did that. So that's another reason. That's a very long answer to your question. Hey, that, look, as an interviewer, I live for a long answer.